Hi everyone, James Mantle here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, you guys, I am so excited to do this video. <laughs> so unless you've been living under a rock, you probably already know that I have been in a movie, yes, on VH1, the beep who stole Christmas, yes. <laughs> I played the character Delia Von White Woman. Some would say she's the villain of the piece. I would say she's an anti-hero, yes. <laughs> in my own little mind, that's how it went. Now I decided it'd be a fun little you know, way to capitalize on this opportunity by recreating the wig I actually styled for myself from that movie. So we're gonna be doing a sort of different rendition on a celebrity wig recreation because that celebrity is me. Yes, a brand new movie star. This is James Mansfield's wig recreation of Delia Von White Woman. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to be shorter, it's just Delia Von White Woman wig recreation. Yeah, but that doesn't have as much spice as saying I'm a celebrity. Because I have to speak it out loud, that way it becomes the truth, because I want to do more movies. So I'm just putting that out there, it's the secret. I'm harnessing and harvesting this and manifesting all of this right now. All right, so I'm gonna get my wig head right here. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. All right, I have the wig all pinned on the head. This is our Femme Fatale in color 613. Yes, platinum blonde. <laughs> Bottle Blonde 613, yes. Now, I am so excited to do this for you folks because I really, really, really loved doing this project, okay? Now, I was so excited to do this because honestly, I've always wanted to be in a movie. It's like my, my it's been my dream for the longest time to be an actress in films. Like, as James Mansfield, I thought it'd be such a fun thing to do and I actually, this came across my desk as far as projects go from a producer over at WOW and they said that they are casting girls for a project. They couldn't really spill much about what it was, but it could possibly be a film. They didn't know yet. They're gonna send me some lines to read and that I had literally that day to do it. It didn't have to be in drag, so I did it. And they asked me if I would do it in drag after they saw the boy one. I thought, well, okay, why not? I got in drag that day. They said, look very, very dowdy because the character you're reading for is supposed to be like dowdy. So I was like, all right, I got as dowdy as I could as far as drag went. Although there's still some James Mansfield touches where I was very, very much trying to muscle in as much glamor as possible. So it still felt like me. But they liked what I did on the audition tape enough where they offered me a much different role than what I initially was offered. <laughs> they were just like testing the waters with Queens, I guess, to see who fit and where and who would be a good fit for what. And I was thrilled because I honestly did not know anything beyond what I had read for. This is kind of how Hollywood works, folks. Like, you wait and wait and wait. And I honestly thought like I must have bombed this audition because they seemed so excited about me. And when I sent in the drag audition, I heard nothing. So I was just like, okay, well, I guess that didn't work out. And I had already prepared myself for rejection. Like, you know what, it's fine. I tried and that's the most important thing. I did not get this and that'll be okay if I don't get it. So it was a really long time. I want to say it was about two to three weeks after I had done it. I got a call from a producer who told me to check my email and review the part they had sent me and see if I'd be interested. So when I got it, I opened up and saw Delia Von White Woman and I saw the script. I didn't know who she was in the script, but I figured, you know, with a name like Delia Von White Woman, I'm probably like the hench lady or something to like the big villain. And as I'm paging through it, I see that Delia has more and more lines and lots and lots of long lists of dialogue. And I'm like, we're reading through, I'm like, oh my God. Am I the villain? Am I the drama? Oh my, I don't think I'm the drama. Yes, I was living, girl. I was thinking to myself, like, all of those, like, Disney villains, I pretended to be as a little kid, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West and all these great villains in my mind. I was thinking this could be iconic if I study for it. So of course I said yes, not even thinking I really could do it. Like <laughs> I had never done anything on this scale before. I hadn't even been in plays before. So like this was really just jumping into something completely brand new for me. All I had really done as far as acting goes is like whatever skits I basically wrote for myself on this channel and a lot of that was improv. So this was like the big leagues jumping into something fully scripted, filmed, feature length. I was excited. All right, let me roll this off camera and I'll be right back and continue my story of the Delia Von White Woman <laughs> journey. All right, we are back. It is all rolled up. I steamed it and dried it, so it should be good to go. 
All right, now where was I with that story? I forget. Yeah, the casting process, yes. They sent me this part of Delia Von White Woman and I read over it and realized it's actually the villain of the whole movie. And I thought to myself, girl, you better take this no matter how big or small this part is, take it. When are you gonna get anything like this again? Even if you can't do it, they'll at least just fire you if you can't do it. So at least you got cast in the first place. That's all that matters. <laughs> so I said yes, of course, I wasn't stupid. And I then began the process of night after night. I had to credit Ernie for this. He made me rehearse. <laughs> Even when I fought him about it, like, I know it. He made me rehearse. And it made me that much better because I was such a little brat about it. Thinking like, I can do it, it's gonna be fine. And like, baby, had I not done that, I would not have been prepared. It would have been a hot ass mess. Cause like, it's always me and this is me being very, very Pisces, thinking I can do something without ever having done it before and I'll just be amazing at it. And it, you always need the input of your friends and your loved ones because they'll be the ones to tell you flat out, like, no girl, you should probably rehearse. <laughs> and it definitely paid off, like I was thrilled. I have to say, like, of course, I'm a busy body. I always ask many questions. I'm so nosy. I was needling around. I wanted to know, like, exactly what made you guys think of me for Delia? I mean, that's a pretty good role of being a villain. You know, that takes a lot. And they're like, well, we were very impressed with your audition tape and thought, well, there's a little bit more there. In fact, the director really fought for the idea of having you play the villain because he saw something there that could probably really work. So they took a risk and they let me be the villain, which I really appreciate because honestly, y'all, you know, before this, I hadn't really done a whole lot as far as TV goes to show that I really done anything as far as TV goes and acting. I didn't make it that far on Drag Race to those challenges, so I never really got to show any of that. All I really had was whatever I was doing on my YouTube channel. But mama, I practiced the house down for this role. I'm not even gonna lie to you, like that was the most tedious boring part of the whole thing was just sitting there and learning those lines and committing the memory and then realizing in the back of my mind like it's all well and great you did this but the second you get there it's all subject to change because that's just how movies are sometimes they'll just cut entire scenes that you learned and you just have to roll with the punches and go with the rewrite and learn it you know a few days ahead of advance or even that day sometimes <sighs> so i was preparing myself mentally for that and honestly on top of that, I also had to rehearse my stuff and figure out what my looks were gonna be because I was given a lot of creative control to figure out exactly who this character was, which I really appreciated because from what I understand, not a lot of projects do that, but they had faith in the queens that they could come up with their characters enough to where they can add to them to make it gel with this script and this idea. So what I was pulling from was honestly, epic movie villainesses from the 50s. You know, thinking of like Dorothy Malone and people like that, but also like people from the 90s that I had like loved in villain roles, specifically Kathy Moriarty in Soap Dish and But I'm a Cheerleader, or Casper even, like she plays a great villain. And I was trying to think like, what is it about her that really captivated me as a kid to where I wanted to be her and I want to act like her? And it was honestly like someone with a very distinct look, like with her, the bright, bright, like, you know, brick red lips, really fright platinum blonde hair, overly glamorous and manicured, and she's got a distinctive voice, which I love. So I pulled a lot from her as far as like, you know, iconic villainesses and character actresses go. That was sort of what was in the back of my mind when I was rehearsing, like, do something that's like Kathy Moriarty-ish. And as far as developing the look goes, I wanted to basically give her Jane Mansfield gone insane. <laughs> like, what would she be like if she had never died and she had basically taken refuge in like some t small town somewhere? She would totally be, you know, the queen bee doing everything she can to remain popular and rig every beauty contest where she always won, which is always kind of the rumor about Jane was that Every beauty contest she did, they kind of just rewarded it to her because she was famous and they knew it would get good press. So she like would take any title no matter what it was. And as y'all can see, I'm just taking it and clipping it as I style it because it's essentially a mixture of 50s and 60s hair. It's 1950s waves with 1960s volume. I knew I'd be playing like an actual person, but I wanted to still have like some identifiers there of James Mansfield. And also I want to make a big splashy entrance. It's my very first movie. <laughs> 
I was excited, you know, I did all my hair for this. I mean, y'all probably aren't shocked to hear that, but like that normally doesn't happen. Usually like you have to surrender to whoever the hair department is. They let me do my own hair. And every hairstyle I brought, I had styled myself and basically I designed myself to what I wanted this character to look like. Like I talked to some of the designers, they heard me for my vision, but I essentially knew I was gonna basically bring whatever I wanted to the table, which I love. Thinking like stuffy 1950s American housewife, like, you know, but evil. <laughs> like Anita Bryanty, very, very conservative because I feel like those make really great villains. It's the people that seem so nice and sweet as pie, but underneath, like, there's some sinisterness there, like the umbrages of the world. All right, now I'm gonna take the rest of this hair down. I'll be right back, and we will start sculpting the hair. I'll be right back. <laughs> Woo, we are back. Okay, I have the hair all cut and teased. Now, with this hairstyle, the real trick to it is, is I have to make sure it is all packed down to the roots in order to get that structure to really go. I make sure it's really, really tightly packed in. I was trying to think like, who is it out there that like really wore hair like this? Or was like very dressy and almost like Marilyn finger waves, but in the 60s. I have to say like almost like Bewitch, Samantha, always wore hair like that. Or it was very kind of like almost a throwback to years prior, but still very, very hip and modern with the times of having the back combing and stuff in it. I don't know if anyone really had hair like that. Like did Housewives really take that much time on their hair to make sure it was that pristine? Like it's just a TV thing. And I love that idea of like just being so manicured. Like with hair this color, she got her roots touched up every single day. Like she never misses it. Like she'll run to the hair salon the second she sees a root coming in. And you'll probably notice that I can style this relatively fast because it's honestly a mixture of a bunch of hairstyles I always do. Just all combined up to make, you know, a big monster mega hair. <laughs> it's very much like big Texas hair mixed with old Hollywood, mixed with 1960s bouffants. A little bit of bubble flip thrown in there. Because I love those classic styles because especially when you take something that's like a classic and seen as very all American and pure and flip it on its head. I think that's very fun. And that's what I loved about doing this project. Like I got to have so much creative control with my character. Like to a bunch of the costumes that I had brought were mine or I had bought them myself. Exception of a few, like um, the little cream colored suit that I did all the press in, that was actually from this place called Play Clothes. And I wish I had stolen that suit from set. Oh my God, I was obsessed with it. I felt like an evil Jackie Kennedy in it. <laughs> or it reminds me of like, um, what is it? I think it's like Ladies Luncheon or something from Barbie. Like she has a pink, big old brimmed suit, like very Jacqueline Kennedy with like a big hat that goes with it. I remember that being like the thing I showed them when I was thinking of like what the character should look like, you know, like a throwback. You know, she's so all American that like, she wears clothes in the vintage section of like every thrift store because she just wants to look like, you know, Anita Bryant. She wants to look like someone super conservative and overly put together. And like that was one of the suits that they had shot for me that I was just obsessed with. Like, yes, I will wear that. <laughs> but other than that, like a lot of the other clothes were just stuff that I kind of like found. Like there's a leopard dress that I found very much like in the style of dresses Jane Mansfield always wore, where like your bosom just spills out of them. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, the dress I wore in the beginning scene with that hair, oh my God, that hair. I could show you a little video of like how it looked because you didn't really see it much in the movie. In the script, it said that she wore the crown all year long after wearing it. So when she takes it off, there's a huge dent in the hair. And like, I talked a lot with the department because they were in control of the crown and they wanted to know how exactly we could do this. And they asked me and I told them, basically walked them through it and did it, where I said, you just take some hairspray, preferably got to be glue. It's gotta be something real strong and thick. I'll spray the crap out of my hair beforehand. And then you put that crown on and spray the rim and I'll hold it. And someone hit me with a blow dryer all around it so that we can sear it in place and create a you know, a crispy rim of my hair. Like we're gonna leave it there and just let it sear in place for like five minutes. And like, lo and behold, you just jiggle that crown a little bit, you'll be able to take that off and it'll be a nice dent in the hair. <laughs> like it looked great, but it didn't really show on camera, which is kind of a bummer. But like, I was so proud of that moment. I was like, girl, I deserve a hairstyling credit or at least a prop department credit. <laughs> I walked away from there like, I deserve so many credits. And we're coming along. Is that a lot of this is just brushing and trimming because it's got to be very much like cropped in and the back of my hair for this is going to get be all fluffed 
It's mostly just all the action happens here and in the front, and the rest is all just, you know, tamed down fluff that we're gonna make into curls. Another fun thing about this project was that I got to see so many girls and work with a bunch of girls that I had never really met before. Like, I have met Ginger a couple of times, and I know Peppermint from my season, but like, I never met Brooklyn Heights or Jan or a bunch of other girls that showed up for cameos. And I was super excited about it and they couldn't have been nicer and like more professional. Like after watching the movie, I was so impressed with everybody. Like everyone did such a good job. And considering like it was the first time doing big movies for a lot of us, like it wasn't just me. A lot of girls had never done anything really quite on that scale before. Everyone just wanted to make it the best it could possibly be which is the best kind of atmosphere. And I know y'all are probably sitting here like, James, girl, you're acting like you won an Oscar or something. Okay, let me live my life, okay? Let me have this, all right? When's the last time I was ever in a movie, okay? I'm going to milk this as much as I can because it's the biggest thing that has ever happened to me as far as my drag career goes. And I'll, not to get all sappy and not to get all like in my feelings about it, but like, it really means a lot to me, you know? I came up in a world of drag where they flat out told me, people, old gays would say this to me, you are wasting your time doing drag. Like there is no future in drag. No one has a career in drag. You're gonna waste your time and grow old and be bitter and resentful that you didn't go into a career path in entertainment that was actually more beneficial and had opportunity. This is like pre-drag race world, I remember it. Before it was the big monster that it is now. Like that's what I came up thinking and being fed to myself that like, you know, this is probably as far as I'm gonna go. And it's just not the case anymore. And like, I'm just thankful that I got an opportunity like this. Because to be honest with you, like for a while there, I was kind of like giving up hope. I didn't think there was going to be a whole lot left for me. I basically figured I had peaked at, you know, the Brady Bunch and that's probably the most I'm ever going to do. And the fact that they thought to include me in this was really, it meant a lot to me. And I took it very seriously. I wanted to be good in it. So forgive me if I drum on a little bit, but it means a lot. It really does. All right, now I'm going to smooth out this top section here and I'll be right back and work <laughs> on the front. All right, we are back. Now she's almost done. I've just been honestly clipping and trimming it so that it creates that nice little flip, just letting the curls do their own thing. All I really have to do now is just work the bang, which is just a method to do this. I just make sure it's all packed down and I just brush and brush and brush until I have it to a workable state and then you just keep laying it and adjusting it until it doesn't piss you off anymore. <laughs> That's really the method of it all. I cut it at a length where it still folds under a little bit. It's not quite my usual flare where it just goes like an ice cream swirl. It's supposed to go under like that so you get more of a finger wave effect and it looks more old Hollywood. Ugh. I recreated this a lot better than I thought I would. When I made it originally, it just kind of like came together as I was just styling hair. Like Ernie had made a bunch of wigs for me that he did hairlines too. So I knew I had to like make something out of these because he put so much time into it. It was really a collaborative effort to like make me look good and make sure my hair looked good. Cause I knew certain aspects, like they told me the only real thing I had to bring was hair that could have a crown on it and a beehive. They wanted a beehive or something. So I brought probably like four wigs with me. The Mary one, the one I wore for Virgin Mary, that was a human hair wig that one of my subscribers actually gave to me and I transformed on this channel. I took it down and steamed it out and reset it to like a finger wave pattern so it could be the Virgin Mary. The wig I wore at the crown that I put the hair dent into that actually is the same wig in the finale where you see me with the beehive. I had styled it up that day and redid it entirely as a beehive because I did not really have time to style that many wigs. So I made this wig for myself to wear as just a standard pretty wig to have, because that was like the real thing I wanted to show out for. It's like, if I could do anything, if my, even if my acting is bad, at least my hair will look good. <laughs> That's the way I felt. And like, I was there with a lot of professional actors and just ringing the back of my mind was something Dolly Parton had said when she got cast in nine to five, where she had said basically, I'm here with Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda, who are accomplished comedians and actresses. So if this movie is bad, it'll be their fault, not mine, because I'm not an actress and I never said I was. So I loved that. That was in the back of my mind. It's like, you know, at least, you know, you do a lot of things well. And if you don't act very well, this is a good way to find out and the best way to figure out, because at least you're in a big part. <laughs> but everyone has been so nice about it, which I'm really thrilled about because I threw my heart and soul into this project. 
I'm really glad people are liking it. That's essentially the Delia Von White Woman hairstyle. Like this is the hairstyle she would probably wear every day. It's very, very 1950s fusion with 1980s big hair and very 60s in the back with the curls just making up a huge mop which the reason I did that was so I can cover up any hair that might show in the back because I had a lot of outfits that showed my shoulders and my bare shoulders. So that was always in the back of my mind, like make sure my boy hair is covered in the back. All right, that is it. I'm going to cut it and put it on my head. I'll be right back with the final result. <laughs> Welcome back, this is the final result. Oh my God, I am feeling my Christmas villainess fantasy. <laughs> this is the Delia Von White Woman hairstyle. I love that I was able to do my own hair for this movie, honestly. And honestly, like I said before, there's so much creative control I got to have in this, like with my costumes and hair and everything and look. Oh, it was a dream come true. It's honestly get to bring my vision to life. And a big thank you to RuPaul and Fenton and Randy and everyone over at World of Wonder who took a gigantic risk on me, really took a chance on me, took a risk and let me do something I had no experience doing. And the director, Don Scardino, who honestly, saw something in my audition that could be great for the movie. And I honestly am so thankful, oh my gosh. It means the world that I got to do this. And I know I've been going on and on about it, but you guys, this was a huge deal for me, okay? And I never got to do anything like this before and hopefully it's not the last thing I get to do. And even if it is, I'm proud of it. Like it was really, really fun to do and I feel like I did the best I possibly could do with this. Now I have to take a moment, a Venmo moment where I think everyone has tipped me on Venmo. I would like to thank Sergio, Corey, Sarah, Amanda, William, and a PayPal emoji from Kate. Thanks, Kate, as well as Eslin. Thank you all so much for the tips on Venmo and the PayPal emojis. <laughs> this was so much fun to do, and guys, thank you so much for watching this and for watching the bitch that stole Christmas. If you watched it, if you didn't watch it, what's wrong with you? Watch it, I'm in a movie. <laughs> Anyways, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro. Click here and see me react to how the beast stole Christmas's teaser trailer. Oh, there's me recreate totally hair Barbie. Yes, come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, some bee will steal your Christmas. So click it.